Trucker Dump for September 22nd, 2010, episode 53, and 53 and a half, kinda. Lunar Driving as a Trucker. Welcome to Trucker Dump, where you'll get one driver's insights and sometimes humorous views of truck driving and the trucking industry, and pretty much anything else he feels like dumping on you. This podcast is brought to you by AboutTruckDriving.com. Resources that help you understand the world of truck driving through the use of stories and a pathetic attempt at humor. Hey there, folks. Todd McCann here. Well, today we tackle a topic that has many of my non-trucking friends baffled and amazed. Most of them say they have trouble for driving long periods of time during daylight hours. Therefore, it's completely beyond their comprehension how the evil overlord and I can drive for 11 hours after the sun goes down. Well, I've decided to explain the hows and whys in lunar driving as a trucker. And oh yeah, that reference to episode 53 and a half? Stay tuned at the sign-off at the end of the show for that explanation. Here's a heads up to any prospective drivers out there. If you think over-the-road trucking is a 9-to-5 job, you're going to be more disappointed than a stoner with a bag of oregano. We have a name for you folks. Solar Drivers. Solar drivers are guys or gals who only like to run during the daylight. While our circadian rhythms are ideally designed for solar driving, the chances of you getting to do it every day are about as good as you finding a Christian atheist that's interested in converting to Islam. Remember that I'm speaking of over-the-road driving. Sure, you may be able to find a local driving job that'll let you do the solar thing, but if you're a long hauler, well, good luck with that. And don't get your hopes up for a local driving job with big bucks and no whammies. The fact is that freight can pick up or deliver at any time, and 9 times out of 10, you've got no choices as to whether you're going to be a solar driver or a lunar driver. Most loads simply don't have enough extra transit time for you to be picky. Common sense would tell you that most businesses are open during the day, so that's when you'll be awake and driving. That's all fine and dandy, but what if you pick up a 500 mile load at night and it delivers at 7am the following morning? This happens quite frequently, so you should expect it. I'd love to tell you that you won't have to drive at night very often, but if I did, I'd be a bigger liar than if Pamela Anderson came out and said that she was born with those entities. No pun intended. (laughs) There is an exception to this rule. If you're a team driver, you may get to choose solar or lunar driving. Since a team truck pretty much runs around the clock, you can usually get on a schedule. For instance, the evil overlord is a lunar driver. Each afternoon, I'd wake her up, and after wrestling the grenade launcher from her, we'd eat and shower. Just before dark, she'd start her driving shift and finish sometime before sunrise. You can do this too if you've got a flexible co-driver who's willing to drive the opposite shift. I'm a lucky guy. Not only am I blessed with devastating good looks, but I'm also capable of switching from a solar driver to a lunar driver in less time than it takes you to roll your eyes at that devastating good look statement. So tell me, why is it that you want to be a solar driver? Are you sure that it's all it's cracked up to be? Here's my argument for embracing your inner lunar driver. There's no rush hour at night. That should be enough in itself. There's no such thing as a good time to cross over the George Washington Bridge into New York City. But if you must, 3 a.m. is the time to do it. There's less construction at night. Even when the crews are working the graveyard shift, there's fewer four-wheelers around that haven't figured out how to merge before you get to the giant flashing arrow. When it's time to go to sleep, the truck stop parking lots are less crowded in the morning. There's less traffic at night. The darkness is so peaceful. The chicken coops, DOT way stations, are less likely to be open at night. Fewer drivers are cursing at each other on the CB radio. It's fun to flash your bright lights at people. Kidding. Okay, maybe sometimes. Oh, so that's why he was cussing at me on the CB. If you're a woman trucker, it's harder for people to notice you. Therefore, they don't slow down, act stupid, try to get your attention, and unwittingly block you behind other traffic. The evil overlord drove at night for this very reason. Did I mention that there's less traffic? Heavy winds usually get calmer at night. The fuel bays are typically less crowded at night. So are shippers and receivers. There's no waiting for a shower at 2 a.m., If you pull out of a parking spot after dark, you just made another driver happy enough to pee his pants, which could actually be the very reason why they're looking for a parking spot in the first place. 
and I should also mention that there's less traffic. Then again, as I make this list, some negative aspects of lunar driving come to mind. For instance, potty breaks become an ordeal because all the rest areas are packed tighter than a Mexican illegal immigrant's apartment. On the plus side, the exit ramps are usually quite dark, so do what you gotta do. Oh crap, dear! There's more drunks on the road, or the sidewalk, or the shoulder of the road, or the ditch, or on the wrong side of the highway, or all the above. You can't see the ladder laying in the middle of the road until it's too late. That would be the ladder that fell off the roof of the aforementioned drunk's VW Beetle. You can't see the smoky bears at night. Not that it matters when your speed-limited truck gets outrun by an armadillo with a limp. Snow-packed and or icy roads at night are much more dangerous, which is why you should pull over and tell your dispatcher to stuff it. Your choice of fast food is Subway, Subway, or Subway. If you're lucky, you can wait a few more miles and find a Subway. It's harder to read street signs in the dark. Fewer of your Twitter friends will be online. Now put down that phone and drive. Finding a parking spot in the middle of the night just plain sucks. Getting brighted by some jerk who's just doing it for fun. <clears throat> I did mention that there's less traffic at night, right? Ah, shoot, that went in the other section. Sometimes that pesky circadian rhythm jumps up and yanks your eyelids shut for no apparent reason, even if you've had plenty of sleep. And the fuzz can easily see if you've got even one teeny tiny little light that's burned out. They'll pull you over as the VW drunk guy does a U-turn in the ditch to retrieve his ladder. So maybe there are some advantages to being a solar driver. I can do either, and quite frankly, it's nice to have to mix it up a bit. I wouldn't want to have to choose between the two, but if I were forced, I'd go with being a lunar driver. Why? Did I mention there's less traffic on the lunar shift? Yo, bud, where do you want this load of feedback? Well, we got a lot of feedback this time around. Uh, this one was on the uh, podcast called Don't Take It For Granted. Uh, Tracy Lynn says, Well said, my friend, well said. Well, thanks, Tracy Lynn. I do manage to say something slightly less than idiotic every now and then. Helmet or Heel says, I don't know how I found your blog and then your Twitter account, but I'm glad I did. You're always interesting. Well, I'm glad you get a kick out of it. I too wish I knew how you found my blog. I'd like to nab more readers like you. If every one of my readers spread the word like you do, I'd be as popular as one of those reality show celebrities. You know, like, well, what's his name? No, seriously, what's his name? Ray Sunshine 77 says, This should be mandatory reading before even the permit test. Sounds good to me, Gene. Now, how can I charge everyone for it? Christy says, another great blog, Todd. I shared it on my Facebook page, and it'll show up in all my friends' feeds. More people need to know what we really deal with out here. I don't take any of the simple pleasures of life for granted anymore, that's for sure. My little bunk serves as my kitchen, my bedroom, my living room, and my bathroom. It can be incredibly difficult to live in such a tiny space, and I think I'll take your advice about the falling items from cabinets. Well, Christy, thanks for sharing it with your Facebook friends. I really do appreciate that. All you other people out there, too. I'm not on Facebook, so if you can spread it on Facebook, I would certainly appreciate it. And about the bunk, that's true. That's where all the action takes place. As far as falling objects go, they were one of the top five things most likely to make the evil overlord curse a blue streak. Thanks for stopping by and leaving such a great comment. Christy also left a short joke, which I thought was great. As she writes, What's the difference between a puppy and a truck driver? Answer? After six weeks, the puppy stops whining. <laughs> she says, sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> well, Christy, that's so true. Truckers are whiners. I know I've been on one a lot lately. Someone please grease me. Oh, wait, that came out all wrong. <laughs> Trucking Jerry says, wow, trucking really does suck when you read it on here. Should have stayed in school. Well said, sir. Well, Jerry, you're right. The evil overlord and I are trying to drill that very thought into our nephews while they're still young. Stay in school, you little fart knockers. FL Trucker's wife says, love this. So true. For those of you who don't know, Casey is a trucker's wife. A new trucker's wife. He's not having a very good first year. 
Hang in there, guys. I swear it gets better after the first year. Herbs and Wonder says, Wow, I sure do have a newfound appreciation for you trucker peeps. That's rough, especially taking second seat to boxes of really important ketchup. <laughs> We're lucky to have you out here on the internets. Well, thanks, Heidi. I've been telling people how rough it is out here on the road for years. Surprisingly, it just comes off as whining. Who knew? Lisa Noack says, I just discovered your blog while researching hazmat loads. I love your sense of humor. Well, thanks, Lisa. You see, I have to unload my humor on the rest of the world. Why? Because the evil overlord has heard everything funny I've ever had to say, and now I'm just annoying to her when I speak. Toozy Point says, I love that name, by the way, Toozy Point. Mr. McCann. Ugh, I'm sure I like that. Makes me sound old. Oh well, truth hurts, I guess. Anyway, he says, Your illustration is the most honest, funny at times, and downright factual account of truck driving life I've heard outside of sitting around with a group of 30-year truckers waiting on a load. My ten years of trucking are over now due to the fact that I'm pursuing a mechanical engineering degree. Keep that shiny side up, partner, and don't let the DOT have too much of your lunch money out on the playground. Well, there you go. You had to ruin a perfectly good post by mentioning the name DOT, didn't you? And dang it, now I just did it. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate the kind words. It takes an experienced trucker to know the truth when he hears it. Glad you've escaped the trucking industry and are now pursuing a mechanical engineering degree. Now quit surfing the web and get back to your calculus homework. And while you're at it, please invent some windshield wipers that will actually keep the ice from forming on the blades. My arm is getting cold all the time hanging out the window to thump the wiper. You know what I mean. And you gotta admit, that's a million dollar idea. And this last comment comes from someone calling themselves Chicago Teeth Whitening. <laughs> I'm guessing that's spam. But you know what? They ask a good question, so I'm gonna answer it anyway. Because I'd be willing to bet other people have this problem too. Anyway, they wrote in and said, this is a pretty decent website. Well, gee whiz, thanks. That means a lot coming from a spammer. <laughs> They went on to say, I have already been back many times during the last seven days and want to register for your RSS by using Google, but cannot figure out the way to do it exactly. Would you know of any instructions? Well, Chicago teeth whitening. She's Louise, I'm talking to spammers. I assume you mean you'd like to subscribe by using Google Reader. If yes, then this is how you do it. Assuming you already have your Google Reader account, just go to your Google Reader... There's a red subscribe button on the left-hand side. Just click on that. It'll bring up uh, a little thing that says to type in a web address and just type in abouttruckdriving.com. No www or http or anything like that. Just abouttruckdriving.com. Hit the enter button and it will automatically find it for you and automatically subscribe you. Hope that worked for you. And if it didn't for some reason, just go to abouttruckdriving.com there is a subscribe button in the navigation bar. Click on that and that will give you other ways to subscribe if the Google one's giving you fits. Well, thanks to everybody who wrote in with their comments and their kind words. I really love it when people leave their comments, even if it's just to tell me that I'm a moron. <laughs> well, if you want to leave your own comment, and I hope you do, stay tuned and here's how. So, which do you prefer, solar driving or lunar driving? Share your thoughts by typing lunar driving into the search bar at abouttruckdriving.com and leaving a comment. My email address is truckerdump at gmail.com and I'm Todd McCann on Twitter. That's two D's, two C's, and two N's. And now on to the explanation of episode 53 and a half. I hadn't done a blog post for a while and people were starting to razz me. To appease them, I wrote a blog post called Solar Driving as a Trucker. The whole post read, and I quote, Go to Lunar Driving as a Trucker, read it, and reverse everything. Smart. <laughs> People were not happy with me. So until next time, drive safe and stay out of my way. <laughs>